Okay, welcome to the uh, August 9th uh, Planning Board meeting. Um, roll call. I see Mr. King, Mr. Baptiste, myself, Mr. Swenson, Mr. Corbett, and Mr. Schultz. Also with this is um, consulting town engineer Charlie Raleigh and a town planner, Mr. Ken Buckland. We have minutes to approve December 7th, 2020, May 24th, 21, June 14th, 21, June 28th, 21. Any comments or questions, Mr. King? Nope, oh, I read them. Mr. Baptiste? I accept. Mr. Corbett? Mr. Schultz? I accept. I take a motion to approve those four minutes. So moved. Second. second. And a second by, we have a, move, a motion by Mr. King, a second by Mr. Baptiste to approve the minutes of December 7th, 2020, May 24th, June 14th, and June 28th of 2021. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously 500. Uh, preliminary business. Tonight, we're doing a joint meeting with the Wareham Redevelopment Authority to hear a concept proposal from Bay Point Phase 4, um, Mr. Teitelbaum. Yeah, I call the uh, meeting of the Redevelopment Authority for August 9, 2021 to order. Can we have a roll call, Mr. Clerk? Uh, Peter Teitelbaum, Ken Buckland, Richard Swenson, we have a quorum. Okay, the only item on our agenda is to uh, sit through the Bay Point presentation. So immediately after that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn and our meeting will be over with. Thank you for inviting us. Good. While Chris is setting up in full transparency, um, the Bay Point Phase 4 is proposed for land that is owned by the Redevelopment Authority, Chris. formerly a CETA property that transferred over to the WRA. Um, in further transparency, I am the citizen at large member of the WRA. I, am I have resigned that position as of September 9th when I took on the chairman role here, but for the short term, I am still a member. Hello, Chris Reynolds from the Bay Point Club. Um, I'm here tonight to present our conceptual plans for the CETA property, phase four. Tim Fay will be joining me as soon as he can find his mask, so he'll be here shortly. <laughs> so, um, so what I have um, handed out is some um, Conceptual site layouts and renderings are also on the board so the audience can hopefully see them as well. Um, we were here a long time ago, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, um, and we had originally did a conceptual uh, presentation for a four-story building, 52-unit building. Um, just to backtrack, a little bit so everybody's aware the seat of property is when you pull in to the Bay Point Club to the right hand side that existing uh, parking lot which we use for our wedding business is on the right hand side then there's some undeveloped woods and then there's the dirt parking lot for the clubhouse that makes up of the so-called seat of property as we call it so um, so just so everybody understands, when you pull into the Bay Point Club, this right-hand side is what we're talking about. 
Chris, you need to somehow we need to get a mic if you're going to be over there, or you can. Sure. I got in trouble last time. So, um, so what you see now in front of you is a uh, more of a townhouse type development. Uh, now that we have under a little better understanding of the market after going through the first phase at uh, the Windwood Pines redevelopment. So this, as had presented previously in the uh, phase two modification, where we're doing an eightplex, this similar same kind of eightplex, as I so eloquently stated, is kind of the same idea of what we're doing here. This is a mixture of, uh, of units of varying sizes. Um, we've got some conceptual layouts there. They vary from uh, some of the end units, 1,865 square feet with a master bedroom on the bottom floor. Those are on the ends. And then more of the traditional townhouse units, 1,514 square feet and 1,290 square feet in the middle. And the idea is, again, to create a array of housing choices and options for the different market that we're, we believe we're filling a need for and there's uh, interest. Because the site, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, there is a pretty good grade difference from the top of the hill to the bottom, probably about 20 feet. Um, so the challenge of redeveloping this site is the elevation difference and trying to work it in. Uh, one of the things we didn't like about the four-story building is it just, it was a four-story building. You know, we're having weddings and golf facility, golf um, outings, and we were really concerned it was going to be too big a building as you pulled into the right. The townhouses allows it to be two stories, allows it to break up the grade, and to kind of use the buildings to drop the grades as you, as you go down the site. What you see on the plan, um, the first two buildings kind of take advantage of that grade change. So basically those will be um, kind of off the road at pretty much the grade elevation. And then as you go around the buildings, take advantage of that grade change and park underneath the building. Use the building kind of as a retaining wall. So this way it kind of fits in with the site and try to use what you got. We have elevation. And then the same thing as you go into the middle of the site, same kind of uh, theory and concept. The buildings on the outside where it gets a little flatter, those will be just two-story units, slab on grade, you know, that look that face the golf course. The side unit, um, which will have some elevation change throughout, will probably be a stepped unit as you go down. This, the real engineering uh, challenge on this site is, is dealing with the grades, making it feel seamless involved. And so that's kind of the eight plex. Um, see, he has his mask now, so that's a mask. <laughs> so the, you know, the, the eight plex townhouse units allows us to build those into and, and use the grade to what we have to make it feel residential, tie in with the other developments that we're doing onto the site and really, you know, um, use some of the same architectural features that we are using in the other phases, similar to what I had presented last time um, as part of the modification. That's the quick presentation and we can open it up obviously for discussion and I can do some more details, but obviously these are conceptual in nature. We were looking to get um, some feedback tonight before we proceed with engineering and there the next step is really to grade out the site and to make sure our conceptual ideas kind of works out. I'm sure it's going to change and we're going to have some retaining walls and step in some of the buildings. We might even have to break up a building but there'll be some challenges to work through in the design and that's really going to be the next step once we get um, feedback from this meeting and to go forward. So the way, the way we'll do this is um, we'll have dialogue between the planning board members and the applicant. Um, we'll have uh, dialogue between the redevelopment authority members and the applicant, even though they're a little 
there is one overflow there. So um, I will start um, with Mr. Schultz, if you don't mind. Do you have any comments or questions you'd care to make at this point? Uh, no questions at this point. I'll, uh, I understand what you've presented. I have no comment at this time. Mr. Corbett. No comment at this time. It looks good. Thank you. Um, I will comment. Um, one of the, I would, I'm, I like the project. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to say that uh, a very comprehensive traffic study will be required. That will be one of the first things that come up when, when this is talked about. Um, I, we will have to do, and Charlie, please help me if I'm wrong here. We will do a site plan review special permit. We will do a conference and recreation zoning district special permit. And um, I meant to look this up today. Is there a subdivision because of parking, number of parking spots? No. Not unless they're changing the layout to Bay Point Drive. Okay. So uh, two special permits will, re will be required. It'll be basically one in themselves. So um, my only comment at this point is to learn on what we've learned on phase two and three with landscaping plans, but more importantly, the traffic study is going to be very important. Mr. Baptiste. No questions at this time. Mr. King. I like this a whole lot better than the first concept. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that the four-story building went away. Um, this is much more appealing, so good job. Thank you. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Teitelbaum from the WRA. Yeah, I would, I would echo uh, Mr. King's comments. Uh, I'm glad it shrunk in height. And Mr. Buckland as a WRA member. Yeah, I, I think this is a good project the way it's laid out now. There's a lot of detail that has to be worked out, but I think that's all doable and, and the plan. So I, I think you've heard um, pretty positive comments. I will ask Mr. Raleigh as our town engineer if he has any town engineer comments he'd care to make at this point. Just a couple of real quick ones. Um, Looking at the first driveway that you come in opposite those parking areas, it seems that the only benefit to that entrance is the first eight unit building. Um, I realize you're gonna be working with grade differences and so forth and it's gonna, right now it's hard to see what those are on this plan. But I wonder if you might just uh, consider sliding that eight unit building a little bit to the left and putting that entrance in between the eight unit and the six unit and just do away with that one-way driveway that you've got there? Because it really doesn't benefit anybody. Anybody that wants to come into this facility, say the one that's closest to Onset Avenue, there any one in the back, they're gonna to have to go to the second driveway anyway. So that was just, my, just an observation. Uh, the second thing is that it's pretty dense in terms of the drainage characteristics and what you're gonna to have to do there for that to accommodate the amount of impervious cover but um, that'll have to come along as a part of the design details and so forth. Um, just be aware that as you move toward the south, um, the uh, soil characteristic may change a little bit. I know that the original concept was to have a retaining area on the, either close to or on the golf course property. I don't know how that's going to work out. We'll see how those details figure out later on. So we continue to look to do that. We think it can be a, a feature, positive feature to the golf course itself and the green area around the golf course. And with the slope of the property, we think that um, we'll be able to handle the water well. I think, it, I think it helps us in shedding the water from the property itself and getting it into a retention area that we can incorporate as kind of a hazard around the green of the ninth hole. So we continue to look to do that. It's the only comments I had at this point, Mr. Good. Chairman. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll answer them just so uh, the board's aware kind of what our theory is. The idea of having that first turn in was to get some parallel spots along um, the front doors, so to speak, of the units. 
one of the challenges we're going for the older kind of retired um, semi-retired crowd similar to the same look that we're going for in in the Wynwood and similar to what you see at the villages a lot up to the site so we're trying to lessen because you're going to be down below for the garage and hypothetically you're going to have a three-story unit so we're trying to make it somewhat accessible in case you know um you know people want to park their grocery you know park right in front have their groceries and and kind of do that so that was the only attempt to try to put that parallel spots in front and 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 the reason it's kind of over there is just to try to make the grades work because that's where the top of the hill is and starts to go down but we haven't started grading sure. yet and there's a lot that's going to change throughout any other um, last comments before I move on? Okay, um, Chris and Tim, I think you've heard um, pretty positive feedback from this board and the WRA tonight. Um, we're excited, I'm excited to see it. I, uh, I will echo what Mr. King said. The, uh, the townhouse concept is much more New England than the four story thing and I'm very pleased to see this I think this is something that we I hope that you move forward with hard we're working so. hard at it right now <clears throat> thank you okay thank just you. mr. chairman just a sure uh, procedural question sure this will be coming to the board as a brand new application right correct it isn't part of a modification of the special permit you have now because it was never part of it right it is currently owned by the town Economic right. Development Authority. So it would be a new application that we would look to incorporate into the CR zone, I believe. I'm not exactly legally sure what this roadmap is, but the property sits in the CR zone today as the town owns it. I don't believe it's a conforming use in its current position because it doesn't have the appropriate number of acreage to fit in the CR zone. So it's my expectation that we will just overall incorporate it into our overall program in the CR zone. I, I would agree that, that you it, looks like like a, it, it may be a modification of the, uh, uh, of the existing permit to expand the, the, the uh, special permit uh, area that's covered by the, the, the district. It's, so it's not in the CR zone now? It, a portion of it is in the CR zone. Um, would you not then need a variance from that portion that is not in it in order to allow that to be well, built? Well, this the way is something that the building commissioner decides, makes a decision on. It's going to have to go through a letter of denial, and uh, th that process for the building commissioner to make the determination what permitting is necessary for the project. I know you can extend into a more restrictive zone by as much as 30 feet, um, but. Uh, that's something to uh, pay some attention to because if, if you can't do it yeah it'll be considered it have to be a modification of the plan to keep it all within the CR zone or you might have to get a change at town meeting to expand the CR zone uh, uh, those are possibilities okay. so mr. buck and what is the next step to determine whether we're doing a, m a major major modification we're doing a brand new uh, application or we're doing uh, CR zoning modifications. Uh, the plans that uh, that uh, Bay Point has at this time uh, should be submitted to the building commissioner for a review of the of, for a letter of denial, which is the letter that spells out what's necessary for the the permitting steps. Is that your understanding, Mr. Fay, or Chris? Um, that is our understanding that this will be. Um, a new application not an amendment of our existing uh, zone and that we'll be looking to the zoning commission for a letter of denial from them for the for the for the building commissioner from the building commissioner excuse right me. okay Correct. okay so the applicant's position is that it's a new application um, Ken had mentioned the possibility that it could be a modification to the existing We'll, you're going to go down the new application and I go believe to that's our current okay train but we're amenable to to getting this into the correct box right that everyone is looking for it to be in and to move the project forward so that's our single purpose mission and um whatever the best way is but to do it, that that's what we're doing it, trust me that's my single purpose mission <laughs> as well to right. just to make sure that we're not having three people going three different directions right. so I appreciate that. 
And um, I, I trust Mr. Rowley, Mr. Buckland, and Mr. Aquina to, to work together to get that done. Is that fair? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I think there's no more new business at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing this in. Appreciate your time. Um, I, okay, Mr. Ask for a motion to adjourn I make, the make a motion to adjourn the WRA meeting. Second. A okay, motion by uh, Clerk Buckland, seconded by Member Swenson. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to saying three zero zero. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second on the agenda tonight is 29-21 uh, in a and &R from South Coast Hospital Group, 124 Main Street and 15 and 43 High Street, map 47, lots 118, 118B, 1050, and 1051. Is there someone here for the applicant? What did I do with my notes, my agenda? Oh, it's on this here. There's no, no one representing the applicant tonight, Mr. Buckland, as far as you know? Uh, apparently not. I'll, I'll represent them. Uh, I'll present the, uh, the application. I'm assuming, uh, I'm assuming you feel this is pretty simple? Yes, it is. So well, It went through a complex process, but it's pretty simple. Um, one of the, I was reviewing this this afternoon, and I have to admit one of the things that drives me crazy is when I look at an A and R application, I can never figure out what the old was and what the new is. I'm try trying to understand what changes are being made here. In right, they usually identified in the notes on the plan. And that, that confused me anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> so can you walk us through, this is uh, the lots to the south of Toby Hospital that we're talking about. I believe they're making a new lot number two that's, that's correct. This is, a, um, this is a special process that's being done by Toby Hospital so that the uh, Historic Society can take over the, uh, the museum and uh, have that as their, uh, as their property. Um, it requires uh, a variance, which was received for the size of the lot and the uh, lack of frontage on the, on the uh, parcel that's being created. Uh, it just takes out as, uh, as little as possible for the museum so that it, it uh, can be a separate lot. The rest of Toby Hospital property remains as is. Mr. Buckland, can you repeat what the variance was granted for? The variance is granted for frontage and uh, size of the lot. Is, is this for lot one? This is lot one, yes. And it's lot, so lot two is Toby Hospital itself, the re remaining property. So its sole purpose is just to create a lot so that they can end over ownership of this piece of property? That's correct. And the Historic Society has been anxiously awaiting this. And, and my understanding is, is that it will always be a museum? That's correct. I'm sorry, help me again. By, by providing these two easements, they're they are accomplishing what? Uh, the easements are, uh, uh, are, are not... Um, the easements are not necessary for the subdivision of the property. 
Uh, it's a um, access easement uh, through uh, through the parcel that that was added to the plan. Uh, the uh, the the key change is the uh, creation of that small lot one, number one in the uh, corner of the property. Mr. Buckland, yes. one of the key issues we've struggled with in the past over ANRs is frontage. And if they've been given a variance, does that remove the issue of frontage for an ANR? Yes, it does. That's the reason why they went to the Board of Appeals first. This has already been to the ZBA? It's been to the ZBA and approved, yes. Uh, if, if they didn't have the ZBA approval, your endorsement of the, of the lot would create a, um, uh, 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 an illegal lot and um, they could get fined by the, the building commissioner for, the, for that creation of that lot. But the, with the Board of, uh, of Appeals uh, relief granted to the, the property, then you can, uh, as the board, endorse it as an A&R. So just so I understand completely, by, by creating this, the historical society takes ownership of the building and the lot. Correct. And it's deed restricted. It can never be changed to a commercial property, residence, anything of that nature. It's got to stay in the hands of the historical society. Yeah, and the, and the historical society has the, uh, uh, the rights to... Uh, to use the property as they uh, they intend, but their um, their nonprofit status is based on historic preservation. So, just so I understand completely, never a storefront, never an apartment building, just a, a some uh, yeah. some sort of historical building that the society owns, maintains, and presents to the public in some Correct. fashion. Correct. I think the, the, the intent to create in the lot makes sense, as long as those restrictions are in place. Uh, another question, just looking at the lot, and this is just for understanding, uh, is there sufficient parking in the space that will be created? Um, parking wasn't uh, identified on the site. Right, that's why I'm asking, because we all know that parking on Main Street down in that area can be problematic. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure the changes that they're asking for impact that one way or the other, though, Carl. Um, I understand your point, but... The parking is the same now. Parking demand is the same now as it will be after this is endorsed. So, Ms. Dunham, I, I see you're here in the audience tonight. Um, can you... Could I ask you if, uh, for your opinion, would you mind stepping up? And I believe you are the chair of the Historical Society and the Historical Commission. Angela Dunham, president of the Wareham Historical Society, the 501c3, and I am chairperson of the Wareham Historical Commission. And do you have any input or any insight you can share with us tonight on this proposal? I can answer the question about the parking. Uh, the building next door, uh, the owner of the building next door has the parking lot and we have an understanding with them that we can use X amount of parking spaces. For the building next door, it was at one time a medical building, medical office building, and I believe WIC is in there as well. And they were open during the week, weekdays, week work days, and the Kendrick Museum, Captain John Kendrick Museum, was only open on weekends currently closed for the season. So it's not a, an issue for parking at this point, even though the medical building now has vacated and they're looking for a, a new, or new tenants will be occupying it. I spoke to the owner of the parking area and he has a right of way up the driveways. The driveways are part of this lot, but the back 
is his uh, parking area. And there's no issue with Mr. Cifolo. Do you have any issues with this A&R proposal? This has been <laughs> something that I have worked on for five years. I have been waiting for this to happen. I have been uh, in touch with Chris Saunders and Matt Lawler, who are South Coast lawyers, and Mr. Bill Dekas, also attorney Bill Dekas, has been working on this together in partnership to make this happen. So this would be something that I have been waiting for a long time to happen. Okay, thank you very much. And, and it is a, a house museum. It's, I'm sorry? It's a house museum. Mm. And the building has been there since 1745. Okay. Mr. Rowley, you have any comments? Just a question. Is there a notation on the plan that uh, suggests the date at when that zoning variance was granted? There should be a reference to the zoning uh, variance that was granted by the Board of Appeals. Otherwise, you will be signing a plan that's non-compliant. Non If it's not there, I'd recommend it be it put is. on the plan. It is. It's number it is. six here. Variance granted for lot one by the Wareham Zoning Board of Appeals on April 14th. 2021 is noted in decision recorded in book 54966 page 25 and that if that in effect becomes the frontage and area of the lot so this should be no problem with signing okay mr Schultz. i have no further questions mr corbett mr baptiste i'm sorry mr king no further question no further questions no questions from me. I'd entertain a motion to approve ANR 29-21, South Coast Hospital Group, Inc., 124 Main Street and 15 and 43 High Street, Map 47, Lots 1118, 1118B, 1050, and 1051. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing or hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? passes unanimously thank you for your help there Angie appreciate it Get this back to you. Didn't sign yet, did you? Not yet. I'm the youngster of the crowd. I can walk down if I have to. While we're doing that, we'll move on to number three um, building commissioner update regarding the special permit for the Clemmy property on Winship Avenue. Uh, Mr. Buckland, at our last meeting, you were going to um, request a update from the building commissioner and uh, through a formal letter, did that happen? No, he did not do a formal letter. What he, he told me that the um, he has completed his enforcement of the special permit at this site. So his report back to us is that he is done, and he believes that Mr. Clemmy is in compliance with the special permit. Correct. Um, I, I'm troubled by that. Yeah, especially after reviewing the. As am I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm struggling for words right now. So um, I hope everyone had an opportunity to see the pictures that I did send out. I did. Uh, just so you know, those were provided by Mr. Dekas, the uh, abutter to the property. Um. At this time. I think um, our wisest course of action is to uh, step back and figure out where we go from here, if anywhere. Uh, we keep this open on our agenda for now, but I, I don't know where else we go. Um, well, can't we override the decision? 
Can't we override the, the decision of the building inspector? I don't believe he's done his job. Um, the research I have done indicates that clearly, and this is in Mass General Law, it's pretty clear that the enforcement um, of any uh, permit or special permit is the sole responsibility of the building commissioner. Um, and I don't, I, I don't know what our recourse is, Michael, but I think we need to take the time to find out before we, we may not have any, I don't I, know. Um, well, I mean, judging by what you just said, we're at, we're at the whim of his decision every, at every turn. There's nothing we can do. Um, I'm not saying that yet, but it, it, if I had to bet, I would say that's the case. But I do. Um, you, you do have one recourse. It's um, through the court system to appeal the decision and uh, as a, uh, an aggrieved party. However, uh, to uh, accomplish that, you still need the um, approval of the Board of Selectmen to. Uh, so we're right back to where we were before. So um, I would uh, I would suggest we table this for now and mm -hmm. give us some thoughts. So I'd entertain a motion to table it. I don't know if I, we even need to do that or not, but I so moved. All right, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make one comment. I think the learning from this for the board is that in the future, when we write conditions, we have to be much more specific. Uh, and uh, perhaps include measurable um, objectives. Yeah. Um, and in fairness to Mr. Requina, the order was maybe a little vague. It, there's no doubt. <clears throat> there's no doubt. Um, Mr. Rowley, any comments? <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Smart, um, <laughs> there's a motion. There's a motion to table this item, um, not close it out. I need a second. Second. Um, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Five zero zero. Um, update regarding the site plan special permit for master mill works at Charlotte's Furnace Road. Um, anyone heard any news? Uh, Mr. Buckland, I think you were the prime interface into them. That's right, and I have not received any inf new information, landscape plan uh, change in the uh, paving uh, details or. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, what, the, the work on the drainage that they had to do. Okay. I haven't received anything on that. By chance, Mr. Rowley, have you heard anything? I've heard nothing from them. The only thing I've observed is that the building is going up. Really? I thought the building permit wasn't issued. Steel's under erection. I was there the other day. The whole steel framework is up. How, how can this be? Well, you can do whatever you want in the town of Wham. <laughs> Um, the, the CO won't be issued until the, uh, the special permit is satisfied. But <laughs> However, if the steel is going up and the underlying uh, asphalt doesn't meet the conditions, what's that? What's going to. The asphalt the, doesn't have anything to do with the. The steel is uh, not going up over any part of the asphalt that's under. No, it's going oh. over the foundation, which was approved. Yeah. Okay. No. So good. Okay, you've, that at least. You still you still got some leverage over the terms of the special permit the way that it was written, and when it comes time to occupancy and forth, so forth, if it's not complied with in terms of what the conditions were, then you can involve the building inspector there. But it's, um, it's at still this point, your, though, this doesn't seem like a good faith effort. They're moving forward yeah. with erecting steel. They, the, their engineer should have had plenty of time by this point to look at those core borings and make some kind of observation. Yeah, it's been two months since those borings were taken, so I, I don't know you what the results yet, are. Shall we? I'm sorry? You haven't received a report on the core borings yet? I've seen nothing. Yeah. This, is, this smells of another case of just move forward and then ask for forgiveness after the fact. Well, we got, we got one guy that's been two years. He does what he wants to do. Uh, we definitely got a problem in this town in enforcement. So. But let me back up a minute. I'm a little confused because I was under the impression that a building permit had not been issued, and I'm under the impression that it still has not been issued. Right. Yet 
building activity is taking place. Is that a fair statement? I don't know the status of the building permit. I know the steel's going up this, because I well, was there. In the, other the past, day. it was reported that the building permit, specifically in quotes, was not issued. That's right. So, uh, uh, Dave Requina had a. Um, uh, the notes that I received was that he had a a, a permit uh, issuing a meeting last week, at which time the the, the uh, conditions of the permits were considered and the, the building permit was, uh, was going to be issued to allow the erection of the steel at the site. So it is, so. It, there's, a, there's a significant cost to the, uh, to the erection of uh, a building and. Um, well, that, with all due respect, that should have been taken into account when they did their site work. That, that, this is the, the owner's issue. This is not our issue. It, I agree. So why was the building permit issued? If, if, if we made requests to have the site work verified and or corrected, and those requests not only did, went unaddressed but w were ignored, then why would a town official issue the permit? This, this whole begs the whole question of what's the purpose of the planning board if the, in, uh, if the inspector and isn't going to consider our input there's no point in us doing anything right it's entertainment for the people yeah he's 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 doing what he wants to do he's not taking anything of any of our input to heart we we get no correspondence from the man i mean if he had concerns about our requests a, a simple email or a letter stating such would be a, in order we we don't even get that it's not right. Um, I think some discussion needs to take place. Um, some of the things I'm considering asking for or suggesting are to ask the building commissioner to come to this board and explain what's going on there. Um, maybe outline to us um, why the permit was issued. Um, why the core sample results weren't considered. I don't, I don't know. Oh. Um, I'm, I think there's more going on than we know about. So Well, that's, I, I would have to agree with that statement wholeheartedly. Um, uh, I can ask the building commissioner, or you can ask the building commissioner for an audience before the board at the next meeting. I think that's the appropriate thing to do. Mr. Schultz, would you agree? Uh, yes, but I think it'll be pointless. I'm sorry? I, I don't think it'll matter. But yes, it'd be nice to have him come by and Mr. tell us Mr. that we Corby, don't matter. It'd be nice to hear from him. Yeah. Michael, bring him aboard. Yep. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay, so um, Mr. Buckland, is that, a, is that something I should do or you should do? I'll ask him, and if it doesn't work, I'll ask you to do it. That'd be fine. Okay, moving on. Um, reorganization for the planning board. We have two things to talk about. Um, one, um, we, need to, we need to have a clerk, and I'd entertain a, mo a motion to nominate Michael Baptiste for the clerk position. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes 500. Zero, zero. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Baptiste. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Signatures on registry documents. Uh, Mr. Buckland, I'd ask you to, if you would um, explain this at a high level, if you remember. Yes, right. And, and uh, essentially what, what was done before is that um, the chairman was given the right to sign a, a applications or permits uh, that filed on the registry uh, alone rather than having all the board members uh, sign on and this was on what type of document on documents that are filed with the registry of deeds <coughs> uh, so uh, like the a and r could be done with a, a signal signature of uh, whoever it could be the clerk it could be the chairman it could be the vice chairman it, it could be uh, uh, a majority of the of the board. Your decision as to what actually uh, gets uh, how that actually gets done. Uh, in in uh, one town, um, 
in Falmouth, uh, as the town planner, I was actually signing A and R's as well. It's it's a uh, it's a designation that you uh, make as the term determination about uh, what the registry is going to look for, and it makes it easier if only one person is signing it. So I don't have to go hunting around for all the board members to uh, come in and sign. So, uh, uh, we can uh, we can do it in a different way. Make sure we have the the uh, plans available at the meeting so that they can be signed at the uh, close or uh, during the meeting. Um, but that isn't always possible when there are modifications in the plans and documents, in which case the, uh, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I know you, you gentlemen are all uh, conscientious, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to get you to, to be at the same place at the same time and uh, sign on to uh, uh, an application. Do you have a recommendation to this board how we should do this? No, I don't, it's up to you. Uh, Mr. Rowley, you and I have talked about this. Do you have any thoughts you want to share? I'll just share my personal thoughts is that uh, in our plans, it would be good if you designated one individual to sign or have an alternate in case that individual isn't there. As far as special permits and uh, definitive plans are concerned, my preference is to have a majority of the board sign those documents. A majority. Majority. At, at least three. Correct. Or whoever votes yes. Hmm. Yeah. Might be the whole board. Hmm. Oh, I understand. I see. Well, if, if I could, I, I think as, as far as signing them, do we all have to be at one spot at one time? Or they don't. just, you don't. Okay, so really the only wild card on the board as far as being available is me. I mean, most everybody else is retired in town. I'm the only one that's outside of town. And I've adjusted my schedule so that I'm back in town at 430 every day. So I can still get to town hall and sign. Do you have any preference there, Mr. Baptiste? You've been around a long time. No, whatever's easy for the board. I think uh, Mr. Rowley's. Uh, Mr. Buckland, prior to uh, a couple years ago, was the only time I was required to come into uh, your office and sign a planning board document. I think it was a subdivision plan. Um, Very well, could have been, yeah. And would that remain the same that all five members need to sign that? Or could we modify that as well? You, you can modify that as well. All right, so I'd make a suggestion that, um, that the chair or the vice chair be documented as um, single, single authority signature for A&Rs and that all other documents require all the yay voters uh, to sign. That would be my suggestion. Yep, I, I would support that. Michael? Yeah, sounds good. Carl? That's fine. So okay. I make a motion that that's what we do. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion by Carl, a second by Michael Baptiste. Just to repeat for the record, ANRs will be signed by either the vice chair or the chair. Uh, just one is required. All other documents will um, require all the yay voters to sign. Um, How about a majority of the yay votes? A minimum of three. Right. Okay? Mm hmm Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero zero. All right. Discussion and possible vote. Hydrogeologist under a 53G account for review of the Faring Hill Road Solar. Before we dive into this, I don't see Miss. Is Mr. Sh is our an applicant here for the uh, representing for the applicant here tonight? Don't see him. Don't see him. Uh, that if, please, um, please note uh, to the members of the audience that, that this is, we are not in a uh, public hearing. Right now, this is a discussion among the planning board. The uh, Fearing Hill project does come up in two more agenda items as part of the continued public hearing. But regarding the hydrologist, um, it was my understanding, uh, Mr. Buckland, that um, before I go there, uh, several names have been bantered about. 
Um, it's proposed by the applicant, proposed by yourself. Mr. Raleigh has suggested ones. We've had people from the general public suggest have, have the applicant and anybody in your office, Mr. Buckland, come to a consensus on who the best person may be? No. So I think at this point then we should just table this. Um, I think Mr. Shanahan needs to be here um, to be part of this discussion. This is a mutually agreed to person, so we'll continue this until the next um, meeting. I, wa I do want to make sure that everybody on this board saw the uh, write-up that I had done and provided Mr. Buckland and Mr. Shanahan in terms of my personal concerns ab about the property and what needed to be evaluated and what we needed to see. Um, I shared that with Mr. Buckland and Mr. Shanahan and Mr. Rowley. Um, I also then subsequently shared it with you all. If you will have, if any other board members has thoughts that they think need to be communicated as part of this hydrologist selection process, uh, please feel free to forward them to myself or Mr. Buckland and we'll put them in the pool. Any other discussion? Seeing none or hearing none, we'll move on. All right. Okay, we're going to go into a continued public hearing for project 23-21, which is a modification to special use permit, site plan approval, and de definitive subdivision plan for Bay Point LLC. Maps 28910, lots 1004A. Elimination of a road and a modification of units. While Chris is handing this out, um, a lot of work has happened behind the scenes in the last two weeks on the part of Bay Point, on the part of Mr. Rowley. Mr. Rowley, thank you very much. A lot of effort was done there. Um, it is the goal of the, my goal tonight that we've wrapped this up. We have a document that has been distributed to the board and I believe posted. I didn't check, Ken, did Sonia get it posted? I was checking now to see if it is posted. I don't see it. But it, it will be posted. Um, at this point, um, all the uh, subjective um, issues that this board may or may not have had with the modifications to the phase two, phase three aspect um, I think have been addressed. It was uh, pretty much some administrative logistics that Mr. Raleigh had taken the lead on um, on our behalf, and I appreciate that. And I think, Charlie, I just ask you now, are, are we at a point, I think we are, that um, we're ready to move forward? Yes, I would recommend you move forward. I don't have a, a written response to that right at the moment. Uh, I looked over the plans that Mr. Principi gave back to me after a couple of comments I'd made, and I had a couple of questions on it that uh, I gave to Chris to give back to Tom, but that can be done on within the 20-day appeal period. It's just on the registry plans. There were a couple of notations that needed to be either taken off or cleaned up, and that was it. So you got a 20-day appeal period from the date that you file your decision with the town clerk before those plans can be signed. So in that time frame, he can do that, and he can just uh, PDF a copy to me so I can just check it. But um, as far as the rest of the plans are concerned, uh, you can take a look at the uh, landscaping plans, which you have in front of you, and the building plans, which I think you also have. And uh, if you concur with those, I think from my perspective, everything is ready to go. Mr. Chairman, a question for Mr. Rowley sure. uh, through you. Uh, Am I to understand uh, that we still don't have an updated plan set, which was my concern at the last meeting? Updated what, sir? Plan set. Yes, we do. Oh. Uh, and it was dated August 5th. It so, came to me over the weekend. Uh, Chris, did you bring copies of the plans with you? I didn't bring the, no. Because I had requested two large sets and then sufficient small sets, six sets for the board. I, I told not. that to Tom. You didn't get the order? So you don't have a final set to look at tonight? Um, Pardon me? I, I'm, I'm opposed to any conditional 
uh, approval, given our inability to enforce anything. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> Chris, how long would it take to get um, getting PDFs of that final plan set? How long would that take? Yeah, we have it. Yeah, we have, them. We have it. I mean, we it, don't. Yeah, so we, do, we, we sent don't. it to, to Sonia, but you will get them printed out and we have them ready. I mean, Charlie was going back and forth with Tom this weekend. Yeah, and uh, I understand. Tom sent it to over there on Sunday. Um, and we're, Carl, too, I mean, the, we're the, just down the plan to, set has been done. Um, it, I, I don't think it's posted yet, though. No. So I haven't been able to see it. I, under, I understand. And I appreciate your diligence. This is part of the process that we're trying to um, uh, be to change, if you will, in, in how this board operates. We've been a little lax in that in the past, and unfortunately for you. So my question is this. If we can get a PDF version of that final plan set emailed to everybody on this board tomorrow, um, is it in the Dropbox? Can we do it right now? Yeah, it, it went to Charlie and Ken okay. this weekend. So they, they have it already. The, yeah, we the just board, don't have the plan. The board Ken already has it. And so we have uploaded. the PDF of the document. It's been submitted. Do I? I don't. They, they're uploaded. It, if you look did you at see the, it? Yeah. They, they're on there. So I'm sorry. I missed them when I looked before. Don't, don't hold. I mean, you could take a vote. You don't have to hold this up on my account well I'd, I'd much rather have it be a 5-0 vote than a 4-1 vote Carl and I'll work hard to make that happen Mr. Rowley you're satisfied that the plan set that was submitted to you um, reflects I reviewed the plan set that came to me it's dated August 5th and I, re I reviewed that plan set for the comments that I had submitted back to Mr. Principi uh, copies I think went to me uh, Tim and Chris That's, yeah, they and I believe uh, I don't know whether Ken got it but I'm pretty sure that uh, Mr. Swanson got it and uh, I'm satisfied with the information that's on the plans now it was mostly technical things it had nothing to do with the location of buildings or the reorientation of streets and so forth which had it been and you hadn't seen that I would not suggest uh, taking a vote on it but I think you could based on the fact that everything that I've asked for has been corrected Michael any any questions or comments no um, I mean I would take uh, Charlie's opinion as the gospel when it comes to this if, if Charlie is is satisfied with what he saw on those final plans and I'm more than okay with it yeah there's been a lot of back and forth between uh, Tim's team and, and Charlie the last two weeks Mr. Baptiste are you prepared to move forward well, I see one tree designated as a red maple. It looks like a green one to me. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm fine. Okay. Mr. Corbett. I'm ready to move forward. Mr. Schultz. So, uh, Mr. Rowley, to confirm, uh, we do have the landscape plan, which were the exception mentioned last week. Uh, there was an <coughs> exception about mailboxes. Has that been addressed? They showed a mailbox uh, location at the end of the cul-de-sac, um, which will be the location where everybody's going to have to go to get their mail. Uh, that's something that I didn't bring a set of plans with me because I assumed we were going to get some laid out tonight. But it did show, no, wrong set. <laughs> On this set of plans here that you have, it's up at the very end of the cul-de-sac. They've simply showed a mail detail. And they would have to work out the details with the postal service. Hmm. But that's the location they picked. So it's up to them and the Postal Service to get that worked out. But at least it's shown on the plan. Okay, did you get the phase lines you requested? On what? The you requested phase lines be added to the plan. Were they added? I requested that they remove details with respect to phase one because it's not a part of your decision, which they ultimately did do. But there is a couple of small corrections on the registry plans that go to Plymouth that still need to be corrected and I emailed that to Tom. I gave uh, Chris tonight just a... Uh, so, so you don't have the final set of plans yet? If they're going to send you another... The final set of plans is the... Uh, it's just the one August. sheet. Just the one sheet, that's all. The, the final set of plans is the August 5th plan right now with the landscape plans that were also submitted on the same date. Okay. Uh, you also were looking for uh, drainage 
uh, add to the plan for approval as a special condition? Was that added? They were, the plans were changed to reflect the discussion that I had um, at a staff meeting. And uh, I'm satisfied with the drainage corrections they made. They are shown on the plan. And there were two light poles missing. You needed more details. They put a light pole detail on the plan. Um, it shows the style, it shows the height, and on the plan shows the location of where they will be. So you're satisfied that they I'm met satisfied that. with that. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you, Carl. Um, Mr. Buckland, any comment? No, we have a, 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 a decision, draft decision that's uh, been worked on as well that, that makes findings and uh, conditions of approval that uh, you should probably review. You have, we have that. I think I, I brought the next to last version of it with me. Uh, do we have it here? While he's looking, um, I'll call, last call for discussion. Hearing none or seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve Project 23-21, a modification to a special use permit, site plan approval, and definitive subdivision plan for Bay Point Club LLC, maps 28910, lots 1004A, elimination of a road and modification of units. So moved. Second. I have a motion and I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0-0. Carl, I appreciate, I want to just make a comment. Um, I'm going to work very hard with you. Rich. And I think that. He um, hadn't seen it. Is this just me? Is this, I don't, this I don't everybody? This is uh, per our previous vote. This is a majority of the yay votes. You can all sign it if you want to. Richard, does that copy have the, the August 5th date for the uh, site plan in the second paragraph on page one? Say again, Charlie. In the second paragraph on page one, does it have the revised date of August 5th, 2021 for the Principi plans? Okay, then that's the latest version. Okay. Since we're all here, why don't we all sign it? And uh, under signature and filing, who, is that one member of the board? You can all sign it there. Well, there's five here. Yeah. And there's one more down here. And the clerk should sign that. The clerk? Yes. <laughs> right. You just nominated him as clerk, so he's using his signature on that. He's got to sign that under a notary, right? Correct. Yeah, Sonia's the notary. Notary, Charlie. Who is? Are you a notary? No. <laughs> Do we have a notary here? Sonia is a notary. And she's watching this she right now. Say she's, yeah. <laughs> So we'll make a mess out of it. You're going to get chastised. Mr. Chairman, just sorry, you did have to do something as clerk. You, you'll also want to sign the plan set itself as well when the uh, when the plan set comes in. Mr. Chairman, that that is two documents in one. It's special permits and the certificate of approval of the subdivision. So don't forget to take your vote on the rescission of the older subdivision, which was a 2019 plan, and vote for the approval of the new plan under Chapter 41. Um, Just voting on the special permit only does half the job. We understood. The I, we've been through this. I, this. Okay. So I'd entertain a motion to rescind the 2019 previous uh, special permit no, and just a, no, just a subdivision plan. Subdivision plan, and 
That's it. And to and to approve the new subdivision plan dated August 5th. And to approve the new subdivision plan dated August 5th. I need a motion. So moved. Second. And a second from Mr. Baptiste. All in favor say aye. 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 And this has to be recorded now, Charlie, somewhere? Yeah, could I just make a recommendation that um, you'll hold on to that until you get the revised copy of the plans? That's in the 20-day thing, right? Then take it down to the town clerk and file it. And a copy of the decision, the file decision with the town clerk, once that's stamped by her, gets sent to the applicant by registered mail. Okay. Um, com just a comment, Mr. Schultz, I am fully on board with your efforts. And... Um, and we'll get there and I appreciate your flexibility tonight. Mr. Fay, uh, Chris, thank you. Anything else? Thank you very much everyone. Thank appreciate you. your Good. attention to this important matter to us. Good. Sign that one that Sonia notarizes later. Yeah, Sonia is watching this right now and she'll uh, notarize it. Okay. This way. I say, let's do it. Okay, moving on, we're moving on to project number 2121 site plan review. Wareham Mass 3 LLC 91 and 101 Fearing Hill Road, map 91 and 71 lots 1000 and 1007 for a ground mounted solar array. This is a continued public hearing. I am surprised that uh, Mr. Shanahan or a representative for the applicant isn't here. I was expecting that specifically to discuss, as I mentioned before, the hydrogeologist um, selection process. Seeing that there is no representative here um, to address open issues that we have, um, I, will, I do want to just uh, outline for this board and get your input and corrections. And the, the, main, the open issues that I have right now are the tree inventory issue, um, and I'll come back to that in a second, the sight line data that um, based on the site visit you all did and identified the site lines um, that needs to be presented to this board and finally the hydrologist report um, in terms of the water impact to developing anything up on that hill um, so those are three major things um, I'd like to talk to the uh, to the tree inventory question Mr. Raleigh you had commented that if we if we had agreed as a board to accept a sampling process to measure where I think Mr. Shanahan had suggested, Shanahan, right? Yes, it is. Had suggested inventorying 25% of the property as a representative value whatever he came up with for an inventory to multiply by four, you had suggested we may need a ZBA or a variant, a variance from the ZBA to do that. I went back and looked at the statute um, in our bylaws and I'm I think that this board could accept um, any we could we could determine the measuring technique is what I, I think we could do I don't think we'd have to go after a variance I would agree with that okay so um, to this board I would say um, we don't need to decide tonight but I would ask you to be prepared to discuss and vote um, when the applicant is here on his proposal of a sample rate inventory technique. Um, he had proposed 25%. Um, we could do that, we could do 50, we could do whatever. But I think that we do have the power to, to do that. I think uh, Personally, I think uh, ma making him do 100% sample maybe a little overkill and I would be amenable to something a little more reasonable. Um, 
so that be said, but we, we will uh, discuss that with your all approval when he is here. Okay? Yeah, I thought, well, I had email saying he wanted to be here to... Uh, he, he had uh, sent a note saying that he was uh, going to not attend, uh, continue the hearing since the uh, geohydrologist wasn't chosen as yet. So one of the things that I had, um, I, I will, uh, this will be open to the public when, once the board has got through its business. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Hold on. Um, oh, I had, I had made the statement that I expected to interview this board to interview the hydrologist. Um, hydrologist. Pardon me? Geohydrologist. Geohydrologist. Hydrogeologist. All right. Whatever. I, thank you. Right. <laughs> Whatever it is, when, um, when um, our, our planning director and with the help of Mr. Raleigh, if he'd be so kind to help, working with the applicant, come up with a name that they would like to nominate to this board as the geohydrologist. I, right. did, I did it wrong again, didn't I? No, you did fine. Oh, okay. That that person come here and be interviewed by this board. I, I have very specific questions that I want to make sure can be addressed by whoever this person is, and I want to hear it from his mouth. So um, I, would, I would ask this board for their comments. How long will the work take once we decide who that person is? That depends on the scope of work that they, uh, that they use. Uh, one of the things that's being considered is um, you have existing conditions and you have proposed conditions. And you have to figure out what the existing conditions are. And that may require some on-site uh, testing. Uh, uh, small bore um, uh, points being driven into the ground, to the groundwater and a piezometer put in to see which way groundwater flow and height and direction is in, in, uh, in the ground and, and identify the, 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 the plane of, of, of uh, groundwater. Uh, then that, what you want to do is figure out what impact there's going to be as the change in the development of the site is going to change how that groundwater reacts, uh, the mounting of the groundwater or the flow, difference in flow and direction and how it impacts the adjoining, adjoining properties uh, that we're worried about. Uh, the, the scope uh, that, that could be used for that could include intensive uh, site work or maybe not. Uh, uh, it, it depends on what the uh, hydrogeologist uh, feels is most appropriate to the, uh, to the site and to identify the uh, impacts of change that we're looking to uh, be identified. That seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. How long would it take? Any, do you have any idea at all? A rough guess? I would say probably uh, six uh, to eight weeks. Six weeks? <coughs> six weeks, yeah. That, that, that would be my estimate, just based on what I've read about it so far. Right. Six weeks, of, and, uh, t because to your point, we need to have a, a current and, and future um, analysis done. We need to know what the base conditions are and we need to know what the uh, geohydrologist thinks the impact of this development would be on those conditions. We need to know our baseline. Right. Um, the only thing I'm worried about, Mr. Buckland, is I'm worried about our timeline. Exactly. We can get an extension written from uh, the applicant uh, that extends the uh, the review period as needed. Um, one of the things that um, the state law says is that the, uh, the the time, the 65 days, runs at the close of the hearing. After so, uh, if you continue the hearing, it should continue the, the requirement for the 65 days. Okay. But we'll make sure and uh, and clarify that in the. Uh, in the approval that uh, they grant for the extension of time. Okay. Um, that being said, um, we have done this before on this board, and is, isn't it tradition? Isn't it the re the process is that the applicant require requests an extension? That's correct. All right. We so. we asked him to do that at the last meeting, and he fussed around about it 
saying, why do I have to ask? But we have already requested that. And, he's, and he supplied that as well, too. Oh, he did supply it. So we did get the extension. Um, okay, before I open the public hearing, uh, Mr. King, any, any comments? None. Mr. Baptiste? Mr. Corbett? Nope. Mr. Schultz? Uh, Mr. Swenson, you uh, itemized three uh, considerations, the tree inventory, the sight lines, and the hydrogeologist <laughs> report. Yes. Uh, I have two more that we had discussed. Okay. Uh, we need updated plans, removing the request for the waiver on setbacks. We don't, I don't think we have those yet. We haven't seen any revisions to plans yet. And uh, we had a discussion about the fact that the Conservation Commission is reviewing this separately. Uh, Mr. Buckland advised that that is a separate decision process. However, if the Conservation Commission does issue an order of conditions, uh, we should uh, put that as a condition, the applicant's acceptance of those order of conditions as a condition on our approval. <clears throat> that you can do. What, what did you say? You can do that, yes. Okay. So I'm adding that as a thing of our, right. our list of... All right. We'll, um, between you and I, we'll, we'll maintain our action list, okay? And we'll write it all down and get it so everybody has it in front of them for our next meeting, okay? Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure I'm going to make Thank the you. next meeting. But. Um, Mr. Rowley, any comments? Um, just remember that um, part of the decision-making process with the uh, consultant that you bring in is going to be the cost. So, 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 so the cost of the consultant is also a consideration that the applicant has the right to agree to or disagree with. So if you can't come to terms in terms of the cost, you're going to have to look at that again. Oh, of That's course. All. Mr. Buckland, anything before I open the public hearing to the public? No. With that, um, the board would be very happy to listen to any comments from the public at this time. Excuse me, one, one uh, I'm, I apologize. One second, I also uh, did want to, the, app, uh, the applicant's not here, so I didn't bring it up. But Mr. Lintel uh, did respond to my request uh, for a reference to the Ancient Ways, uh, uh, I don't, I'm gonna say comment or claim, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be pejorative, uh, and I was going to provide that to the applicant uh, who said he doesn't know anything about that. But Mr. Lintel did uh, send Mr. Buckland uh, that reference. Can you share it with the board? Uh, Mr. Sure. Mr. Sure. Buckland, Mr. You... Buckland got the email and then. Yeah, I'll send that out. Okay. That was from who again? Uh, Lintel, Eric Lintel. <laughs> right. Sorry, Eric Lintel, if you don't have it, I have the email you sent to me. Okay, we're going to uh, open it for public and just as a matter of course, as I did um, in our last meeting, uh, speakers will be entitled to three minutes to speak. Um, I ask you to please bring new information to the table. This is the third session of this public hearing. Um, if, I fee if I feel that we're hearing the same thing um, over and over, I will interrupt you and ask you to bring new information to the table. Um, I want to keep this, and the reason I do this is I want this to be productive, and I want to give everyone a fair chance, and I want to keep it moving along. So with that, uh, Mr. Buckland, do we have anybody on Zoom that would like to speak? Let me see. Nobody's raised their hand. Anyone in the general audience, please come forward, identify your, your second. All right. You need to put a mask on, sir. Please identify yourself, Tricia. Well, gentlemen, I'm Tricia Wirtz. Can you hear me through this mask? Kind of. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see through it. If you um, I think I have one other issue that we need as a group to look at, and I am concerned about bringing it up without Mr. Shanahan here. So, and that has to do with noise. With? That has to do with noise. Noise? Yeah, noise at these sites. And um, 
when you look at solar sites, you have several pieces of equipment that make noise. Um, you have the inverters, you have the fans, you have um, transformers. And in the state of Massachusetts, the, loss, the law regarding noise says that the noise can be allowed to be 20, uh, 10 decibels louder than what your traditional ambient noise is. So in a country setting, they make a guesstimate of ambient noise being at 25 decibels, which means at the highest level, the noise should be no more than 35 decibels. I don't know without Mr. Shanahan here how many inverters are in that project. You can have a single inverter or multiple single inverters, or you can have little inverters on every single panel. So there's no way without his input of understanding what the possible decibel noise level is. There's um, nothing without his input on telling me, uh, telling us what the transformer level decibel noise is running at, um, nor the fans. So the noise also breaks down into two types. So um, we're looking at um, a basically what they, they call a um, source sound or a, 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 a base sound, it's not, it would be like a small vacuum cleaner running. For a 60 hertz site, they're saying that can be 120 decibels. And at that type of machine also um, produces um, additional types of, of noise that graduate, so it might run at 120, 240, et cetera. I've had work experience in this field, but with electronics, with computers, and it runs, the, the harmonics runs much the same way. And then lastly, the state law says that this sound that's generated 30. cannot be take, taken um, isolated, you have to take into consideration the other noise that's around it. So stop me, Richard, if I go over it. I just want to read a piece of this law. It's the Massachusetts regulation was written to prevent noise creep, ever escalating noise within a community due to permitting a sound source in isolation or without regard to other sound sources already in existence. So in this particular neighborhood, they already have a solar field there where people are complaining about noise. And I would think that there would need to be a noise measurement. That type of stuff can be done before another solar field is put right on top of them. Thank you, Ms. Wirtz. You identify yourself, Annie, please. Mr. Chairman, can I just interject something here? It concerns me a little bit that Mr. Shanahan isn't here and to take any kind of testimony on a public hearing, I don't think it's fair That's to him. That's what I'm speaking to, Mr. Oh. Rowley. Um, I, thought about, I thought about that. I think um, it, I think it, I'll speak personally. I think the impact of Mr. Shanahan not being here impacts the speaker. Uh, much more than it does this board or this land use board. Um, your point's just, well taken. I just don't want to, I don't know why he's not here, but uh, I don't want to see him um, suggest that his rights have been violated by him not hearing the testimony, that's all. Um, he does have the ability to review the video of the testimony. If, it, if it's fine, okay. But no, no, I'm just I saying, just I, I don't know what else. To I think for the record, um, I'm going to just I'm going to reiterate to the audience that um, while you're welcome to make your comments, understand that, that the applicant is not here to hear them or respond to them, and he will not be held accountable to respond to them um, based on statements you make tonight. Tonight, you're basically speaking to the board. You're not speaking to the applicant. Um, and if you want to proceed, you can. So Annie, go ahead. Uh, Annie, Annie Hayes. A number of us have said that we, we um, want to and we had intended to speak to the applicant 
as well as, of course, you being the decision makers. Um, and that without that, um, you know, the, the object of our discourse is, is not kind present. And didn't, didn't notify us, and it was very odd and disrespectful. I, I so I think, I think I would like it if you would suggest a vote amongst us. I'm fine with that. If, you know, if the majority wants to stay, I'll stay. But if the majority wants to come back when he's here, I would go, abide by that as well. This, this, this hearing will continue again and again and again and again. Okay. You'll have plenty <laughs> of opportunity to speak to him. Trust I me. I show you my model I made afterwards, though, after the meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. Ms. Wirtz, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to know. Okay, you have to come up. You know, that, that statement about speaking without him here, um, if that's, and I think I would have preferred him be he, to be here, so does that mean I can recover this? Yes. Okay. That's Absolutely. It. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, Lisa Morales has raised her hand online. All right. You'll be next, sir. Um, can you please make it work, Ken? Let's see if we can make this work. <laughs> Lisa, are you available to speak? While Mr. Buckland's doing that, sir, would you like to come up and speak? Members of the board, my name is Craig Fontaine. I live at 26 Helen Street in West Wareham, and I am a direct abutter to this project. I have had to take my time off from work tonight to speak tonight. Mr. Shanahan not being here is not my fault. I want to read the statement that I prepared. When I first he heard of this project, the first thought I had was, this is nothing more than a land grab. The property owners could not develop this site over 15 years ago and were denied due to the land would not perk. Then the landowners went into default on the property taxes for over five years. Now under the lie of clean energy, you propose to destroy 26 acres of prime undisturbed natural forest and eradicate all the wildlife in that area. Next you spin the tail of a requirement of a cul-de-sac that needs to be here. There is a 20 foot wide service road that extends around the perimeter of this site. There is also access between each row of panels. The sole purpose of this cul-de-sac is so when this project becomes obsolete, say in five years, the new requirement now down by the town, the land will already be cleared, cul-de-sac in place, and now the owners will have all the infrastructure they need to build the housing development they were not denied 15 years ago. We will not be fooled. I'm told this board visited this site at the Fearing Hill Road at the 100 foot setback. Is that correct? I'm sorry? This board visited this site over on Fearing Hill Road at the 100-foot setback where the entrance is going to be? That is correct. That's correct. For the, rec for the record, I, th I did not. Miss I was there. I, I was there. The yes, I have. And you were at this location, correct? Correct. At the 100-foot setback. Correct. 
The proposed limits of clearing from the property line where I live. 30 seconds. 25 feet more or less. 30 seconds. 36? 30 seconds. This is absolutely positively unacceptable. When the board did their tour, did they also stand across the street to increase that distance, to make it more palatable to them so they can shove this abomination down our throats? I've spent the last seven years building a brand new home with my own two hands. I chose this property primarily for the natural beauty of the forest and the privacy it offered. Ten seconds, sir. First and foremost, I would have never invested my time, money, and retirement plans to settle in this location had the solar field been pre-existing. Thank you very much. I will not be driven out of my home by this insidious project. Thank you very much, sir. As proposed, no amount of restitution paid to the abutters by Mr. Shanahan could account for the quality of life. Sir, could you take your seat now, please? Sleep deprivation and mental well-being suffered by the people forced to live next to this thing. Sir, I've given you the time that you I required. I am a 30-year veteran correction officer, sir. Thank you I for your input. Retirement. Thank you for your input. I have dealt with the worst of society behind prison walls. I've had urine and feces thrown at me, been assaulted by inmates, requiring me to have surgery. I've had to deal with inmate hangings, fights, stabbings, substance abuse, and mental disorders to name a few at my job. Now you all take the one refuge I have from me. My home, my peace, my mental well-being, and my plan for a happy retirement. It will not be allowed. So, someone else like to speak? Ms. Morales, are you there now? Hold on, hold on, we're trying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What information? From Mr. Lentil about the ancient ways. Oh. Sure, we'll read this into the record. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to know from Mr. Swenson and the rest of the board, what are your qualifications for interviewing a hydrogeologist? I'm, I'm not going to entertain that question, Ms. Morales. I think it's very relevant. They're planning board members. They make the decisions based on their appointment as a planning board member. But there has to be some sort of qualification you have. Two so minutes, Ms. Morales. Um, what is the law that says that you have to agree upon it with the applicant? Because my information is that the planning board can choose their own expert. It's under 53G, <laughs> the state law, 53G. Could you cite it, please? Chapter 53G. Okay. And I strongly urge you not to allow them to go to a sampling method about the trees. It's not only six-inch trees for um, 
non-deciduous trees, but also if they find American holly or other slow growing trees, it's four inches. And if they wanna take down 100% of the trees, they need to count 100% of the trees. One so minute. Do not to let them cut corners and that they take a full and complete inventory of the trees under our bylaw, it's required. So because we have two different standards, not just six inch trees, but four inch trees for slow growing, such as dogwood and American holly. So please do not allow them to sidestep that. And Mr. Mr. Shanahan could be online just like I am now. Apparently this is of no importance to him. 30 and seconds. We need to move on without him and deny this permit. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morales. Any, anyone else online, Ken? No, no one else online. Anyone in the audience? Yes, ma'am. You need to wear a mask, please. A little word of criticism here. Can't understand a word any of you are saying. You see me right here at the back of the room from everybody. Everybody who has spoken, this is what I hear. I've had no clarification back there. Okay, I'm Kathleen Melka, again, 26 Helen Street. A little autobiography on me now. You heard from my husband. I'm a retired paramedic, 25 years. So over the course of that last 25 years, when I go to sleep at night and close my eyes, I relive everything I've seen, everything I've done, and everything I've seen people do to each other. I have pulled teenagers out of car wrecks due to drunken drivers. I have seen an eight-month-old baby who was abused by his mother's boyfriend when he dipped the child's hand into a pan of boiling water. I have taken care of countless elderly people who have been abused or just neglected, which is a travesty. I have done a lot. I've seen a lot. And it, you just all be glad that I did the job that I did. I loved my job. I felt I made a difference. And I'm hoping I can make a difference here. I'm tired of this. We have taken our time. We have come here. We have pretty much told you all, everybody here, these are the people who count. Not Mr. Shanahan, not Mr. Crespo. They don't count. These are the people that count. These are the people who live here. These are the people who live all around that. They pay their taxes, they buy their food in town, they buy their gas here, they live here. We are residents. This is Wareham. One minute. This is a bucolic little town, and you are allowing a snake oil and wildflower salesman to come in. I know you all know he's a disbarred attorney. You are aware he's a swindler. You've already allowed him to do it to you once with Squirrel Run. I don't know how many more you've allowed him, but I've done some big homework on this gentleman, and I think it's disgusting that you people entertain anything. 30 seconds. That this felon who went to prison for swindling people out of their inheritances, out of settlements, is coming here to swindle all of you. He says all the things you want to hear because that's what he does. It's up to you. You're all adults. You're all grown people. You can all form your own opinions, but nobody wants to be Ten snookered. Seconds. And that's what you are allowing Mr. Shanahan to do. You're allowing him to pull the wool over all of our eyes and tell us that he's going to be a good neighbor. Thank you for your input very better. much. So. Thank you. This project needs to stop, and I have a motion Thank you. that this project should stop, and I hope all these people here would stand up and be recognized and want to put a stop to this. Thank you very much for your input. Anyone else in the audience? 
Anyone online can? No. Good evening. Uh, Eric Lintola, 15 Squirrel Island Road. Uh, I'm going to hold some, a lot of comments or specific what I want to talk about because Mr. Shanahan is in here. But since it was brought up as far as the ancient uh, Indian route goes, I'll just address that shortly since it was brought up something to think about. On August 3rd, as stated in Wareham Week, a large crowd of people gathered at the onset VFW to support limiting solar development on previously undeveloped land in order to protect the environment. Speakers included Senator Mark Pacheco and leaders from the Wampanoag tribe. As I have mentioned before, and I believe, and I believe it needs repeating, about going to mass.gov under the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation Heritage Landscape Inventory Program, and it states, and I do want to repeat this, that in ancient Indian route through the Weeantic Wee watershed <clears throat> is a significant cultural resource and is threatened by development. And the question is, a lot of these things about these ancient ways, uh, the Wampanoags get swept under the carpet. I think this is a very important issue that why not bring in also, besides a hydrologist, an archeologist to investigate this matter. It's in the state record. It should be looked into. If there was anything found significant on the site, they would stop it. One last thing I'm gonna, I just wanna say, and I don't mean any disrespect to the board because I do understand trying to run things smoothly and get things done, get business done without a lot of interruptions and things. Uh, the three minute, there are a lot of people, passionate people have things to say, people with a lot of information. And I've practiced and I've tried the three minute rule and it's very difficult. And I've had to take out a lot of important things. But I would hope the board would sort of reconsider it a little bit, maybe adjust it a little bit, add just a little bit more time. I've spoken publicly for years while I was a teacher. A little more time would help. It's, and the countdown, it doesn't work. It's very disrespectful and it's interrupting. So that's, I'd just like you to maybe reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie Edwards Davis, Trinity Lane. Um, I'm not going to make all my comments today because I also wanted them to be made in the presence of Mr. Shanahan, but just a couple of points. Um, so I just looked up Mass General Law Section 53G, and it does not say that you must mutually agree on a consultant with the proponent. So I would ask you to check that. It does outline some rules, but it does not say that you have to mutually agree on the choice. It says that the, uh, that the proponent can uh, deny payment for the services if they don't like the, uh, the resume of the, of the uh, specialist. It says that they can appeal if they don't like the qualifications of the person, well, but there's an appeal process. It does not say you must agree on a candidate for the hydrologist. I mean, it doesn't say that. Ch take a look at it. Just you know, just take a look. And then I would like to follow on what Eric said about the um, trails. So we've done some research about um, the Wampanoag Trail. There's a map that I will send to you all by email after this meeting. It's from 1795. It was published in Wareham Week based on some uh, research that Mac Finney had done. Who? The Mac Finney, he was involved with the Historical Society. Um, it shows a red line that shows the Wampanoag Trail that had been researched. And it's, uh, it follows along the Fearing Hill uh, Road right where this property lines up to. And on the um, survey map that was in the site plan review, there is a dotted line. And someone had asked about this dotted line. Well, it turns out that's the topographic survey marking for a trail. And this trail only shows up on certain maps in the GIS between the years 1939 and 1977, and then it disappears from the contemporary record. It literally lines up with the Wampanoag uh, trail that's been established and researched. And I think this needs to be looked into, and we need to make sure that this is not part of the Wampanoag trail, where there might be valuable archaeological um, discoveries to be made. It should be ruled out before we just proceed to 
cut down all the trees and destroy that property. Could you hand that, that graphic in? I'm going to send them all to you by email because they're better copies than what I have here, which I've all right, great, thank you. Yes. The, the best way to do it, Leslie, if you don't mind, is um, for continuity of records is to send it to Mr. Buckland sure. and then he can put it on the website and forward to all the appropriate members that this, you know, absolutely. And that's fine. That, that, that's the way we'd like to do it. And okay. but you, you, you have my email. You're, I do. Free, you, you're free to send me anything you want, but for something like this, this is, I'd like to do it this way just to make sure that we have a permanent copy of it. Absolutely. I have more to say about vernal pools, but I'll just make that point next time when I have more time. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Change your mind, Danny? Brownies. <laughs> I did because, you know, I'm, I have more to say than three minutes, so I'll take this on three minutes. Annie Hayes, and um, I want to hand out this. this I um, showed the, um, the ridge and the overlay of the project on top of it um, and how it impacted the watershed. Yeah, just hold your comments till you sit back down. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you split that? Sure. Thank you, Annie. Last meeting, I showed um, a overhead that showed the ridge, the highest points of the ridge, Faring Hill Ridge and as that made its way into the lowlands, the wetlands, and to the river, the Wee Wee Antic, um, showing that it was a very significant part of the Wee Wee Antic and the Simpican watershed. Um, this, this here is the topo map that the uh, proponents supplied. It has the Faring Hill across it. You can see that ancient trail, that's the map where all of a sudden we realized, and, and a GIS expert, mapping expert said, concurred that that was the ancient um, way, the path. Um, so there is the top topography with the high point where that little left section of the Y goes across. And what I can't understand is that they're just gonna move a little bit of earth around from here to there. I understand now from reviewing the meetings that when they say no earth removal, they don't mean they're not going to shift the top of the ridge. They mean they're not going to move it off site. And they were clear about that. And on the back side, I'd like you to flip over, look at the lower left hand corner where it says it's a little dialogue there. That's from a meeting where George Barrett was still the chair. And it went like this. It's just a synopsis, but you can find it. It's um, the 28th of June meeting um, number uh, minute one hour 140. Atlantic said, yes, there will be earth moving from one area to another, but no removal from the site, shifting and scraping. Richard, you said, I'd be very interested to learn how deep you could possibly go. Atlantic, no major excavation. There's 20 acres, plenty of soil to move around to create berms. Richard, how big, what's major and what's shallow? George Barrett, who was looking at the map, said, looks to me you're planning to take about 10 feet off that ridge. Atlantic, no response. George, maybe not quite 10 feet. 30 seconds, Annie. Okay, quickly, this, this isn't gonna last, but I made a Play-Doh <laughs> model of the ridge. I tried to have it. Okay, it's a, it's a clay model of the ridge with the panels on it, and it shows that if the sun is coming up from the southeast, it'll hit the front panels, but on the back side of the ridge, those panels will not be catching the sun. Maybe at midday they will, but when you still have the ridge intact, the high point of the ridge, there are panels that are going on the back side, as you can see from that topo map, it goes to the back of that. So what I want to know in specific terms is just what George Barrett was referencing. They're going to be 10 feet off the top of that ridge, 8 feet, and you really asked that as well. 
And if so, that is going to change all of the water. It's like a plateau up there. So none of that water is going down to the, the, the watershed, but also it's going to plane off those panels down to the roadway. I mean, I my language isn't exactly a geohydrologist. I need you to wrap it up, man. Okay, I'm wrapping it up. Thank you. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your model. Can you leave it for us to look at afterwards? Absolutely. <laughs> any more comments from the public? Ken, any comments online? No, no comments online. No hands raised. Okay. With that, I'd entertain a motion to con Do I need to do a motion to continue? No. A motion to continue the public hearing? So moved. Second. Uh, having a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Date certain. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm date sorry, Charlie. Date and time certain. I'm date and time certain. You need to include that in your motion. The 23rd at 6 p.m. So I'm going to withdraw that motion and make a new motion and make sure I do this right now. I, I know you will. <laughs> that we continue this public hearing until August 23rd at 6 p.m. So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Passage unanimously, 5-0-0. Good. Okay. Oh, I, I can still do this. I am going to read into the record a uh, message here from Mr. Eric Lintala. I'm going to leave out the part about email addresses and and say um, he has sent an email and it says attached is a location on the MassGov site in parentheses Department of Conservation and Recreation dash Heritage Landscape Inventory Program Wareham Reconnaissance Reports as to where to find the statement pertaining to the quote ancient Indian route. There isn't much but it was important enough to be mentioned in a state report. I appreciate yours and the board's interest and concerns on the Faring Hair Solar Project. Thank you, Eric Lintala. Um, and Carl, I guess you have this attachment. Um, all right, can we get that posted? Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on. We're going to go to a new public hearing, and there isn't any. Good. Next is any public comment on the master plan, update or new initiatives. This is an opportunity for the public. Annie, and you're going to keep this to master plan updates and initiatives. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have the master plan in, in the forefront of my brain, but... I have read it, and I know that it focuses on the wants of the people surveyed, the whole town, and they want open space. They want open space to preserve the land. They want open space for recreation, all the things we know. And another comment that I would like to um, say is that if there had been a public comment for that last project, I would have asked them, any solar panels on these new houses? I would ask everybody who comes here that same question. That's what has to happen if we're going to stop destroying our forests. We all know that, right? Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on master plan updates or initiatives? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, other business discussion, we were going to have a conversation tonight among this board about um, member initiatives that they're interested in, in bringing forward in um, off-cycle workshops. Um, I'll start and say that from my perspective, um, my initial goals are to work on process and procedure and um, education um, initiatives. Um, I've already started and it's something I, that I'll be doing on my own and, and sharing with you. Um, I want these meetings to go smoothly and efficiently. I want you all to have the documentation on the laws that you need to know. I need you, want you to have them in, at your disposal during, during these meetings and I have ways to do that and I, I also want to have some off-cycle sessions 
where we talk through what site plan review is, when we talk about why it's important and what are the key factors of it and what are the procedural issues that we need to be aware of. So um, that is that is my initiatives that, that I will bring forward. I will turn to you, Mr. Schultz. Do you have anything to say tonight? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I agree that I, I think an area that we as board members can help improve is process. Um, also, I think as we learned tonight, if we can focus on uh, when we, we issue an order or a special condition uh, that we, we get more clarity on what we're expecting so that the enforcement officer does have an understanding of what we're looking for and we don't leave it up to um, uh, interpretation where, where we can. So that's a process issue and it's a learning issue for all of us. Uh, I look forward to um, participating in, in the education sessions that you've discussed uh, where perhaps Mr. Buckland or Mr. Rowley can uh, coach us uh, on how to, how to make this move more smoothly. Um, uh, and I'm looking to make sure that from meeting to meeting and from um, over time on these projects that we have the opportunity to go back and understand what was going on at the time of approval or denial uh, so that we don't get crosswise. Um, and I think that's hard to do. But yes, process, it's, uh, those are all process uh, kinds of things. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Not to repeat what both of you guys have said, but like Mike Baptiste has mentioned many times, I people believe you can do things in Wareham and not have repercussions. I think we need to work on how do we enforce the issues that we talk about? How do we enforce the issues like Winship? How do we enforce the issues not be told, well, there's nothing we can do. There has to be something we can do. I think that's one of our, my main goals is try to find out what we can do to stop the things that we don't want to happen to happen. Okay. Mr. Baptiste. I'm going to never be dead. Mr. King. I, well, I got to agree as far as the, the processes and, and refinement of our processes. I think that's paramount. Uh, we've been kind of uh, uh, on a ship without a rudder for a while now. So I think tightening that up is going to help us a bunch. Um, the one thing that I wanted to bring up, it, it really doesn't apply to processes or whatnot, but I wanted to share something with everybody. Um, so, uh, as you know, I sit in on the SERPED meetings, and there was a very interesting meeting uh, on the 28th where a young lady from the, uh, from the state gave a presentation on the American Rescue Plan. On the American Rescue Plan and the incredible amount of money that the state has to spend. And one of the key areas that they're looking to spend that money on, they had uh, bullet points on different areas that they're earmarking money for. And one of them is uh, downtown revitalization. Really? Yeah. So the state has $5.3 billion to spend. They want to spend $2.9 billion of it immediately. So I guess um, my, my comment would be who, who within the town is responsible for jumping on this? And I mean, because we've got a, a downtown revitalization plan just about ready to to go. I mean, we had some small tweaks that nobody could really um, agree on as, as far as building heights and whatnot. But for the most part, all the heavy lifting was done. And it seems to me like this is a golden opportunity to jump on some of this money and, and, and get it. Mr. Buckton, you want to comment? Absolutely agree. Uh, there's a lot of money out there. And uh, what we have to do is find the channels to uh, get it to be applied to the to the town. They have not, uh, the state hasn't provided us with um, any um, uh, program per se for the application of the money. So uh, what we got to do is make our own ways into it and uh, uh, show how uh, our, our project is, is worthy of the, ex of the uh, investment by the state. Is, um, are you familiar with the downtown revitalization fund? Yes, I am. Um, is this something that um, 
Michael, I will, I will say that uh, at a typical WRA meeting, we're voting to authorize Ken to apply for this grant, that grant, or another, typically one or two a meeting. We're, do, we're doing that. Um, well, that was, to be honest, that was my thought, is that Ken would be the, um, the one, I mean. I'm I, wondering, I, is there an opportunity, uh, Mr. Buckland, um, you, you are very good at this. I know that for a fact, and, and I guess what I'm going to say is, how can this board help? Can this board sponsor a, an, a grant application and, and ask you as its representative to draft one, or, we, or would you rather that go through the WRA? What would be most effective? I think if it's more than one board, it, it, it is a stronger application. And I think that uh, you should take a role as, as stronger, as, as important as the WRA. It, just that there's a, a difference of, uh, of the direction that you're taking, uh, somewhat uh, uh, different issues that you have to address versus what the WRA, which is a more focused uh, organization. Um, so, this, so this board understands one of the things on the WRA that we've done is when we have applied for a grant, um, I myself have taken the task to reach out to other boards and said, here's a letter I want you to sign. And here's where you send it, and, and, and could you, Mr. and Mrs. Chairman, sign it? And, um, and we've had good success doing that at the times we've tried it. Um, how about you and I work together to coordinate? And, and I think one of, the, one of the important things that you could do is actually uh, modify, amend the uh, master plan to uh, address issues that are funded by the, the act, uh, by the uh, program. Um, and uh, uh, have something in there so that we have a, a, a town document that includes that the, we can uh, reference references the specific program and uh, application of it and that can help in our application yeah absolutely so to make sure everyone understands the suggestion is is that um, we actually update our master plan in the uh, village uh, revitalization area because there is a big section in the master plan about that to specifically call out applying for uh, this specific grant and others. Right. And being able then to allow you to apply for it and referencing the Wareham Master Plan, which specifically calls out that grant. Correct. Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to work with you on rewording that document and updating it. Okay. I, as you know, I believe strongly that that should be the document that guides how we think um, about so, our, our role. So I'd ask, all right, any other discussion on this? I'd ask for a motion, I mean, I'd accept a motion to authorize uh, Mr. Buckland, myself, and Mr. Schultz to work together to bring back to this board a suggested edit to the Wareham Master Plan specific to uh, applying for downtown revitalization grant money. And I think, I think that's about it, right? Any motion? So moved. Second. And a second. Um, motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mr. King. Any discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Um, Mr. Schultz, we have an item here on permit numbering system. I know this is near and dear to your heart. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, yes. Um, I've been discussing uh, with Mr. Buckland uh, off cycle, but one of the things that um, I have observed is that uh, the applicants that come before the planning board uh, often um, come before other boards and, and um, in town, particularly the Conservation uh, Commission, which is another uh, board that I'm very interested in. Uh, and, and potentially the Affordable Housing Commission and others. But one of the things that's very difficult, um, a, a has been very difficult in the past, is to recognize um, when those things are occurring. And in particular, when, uh, while Mr. Buckland has clear, clearly advised me that, that each board's decisions are their own, and, and as they should be, um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be aware of those decisions. And in particular, for us, if there are uh, Conservation Commission uh, considerations for projects 
that we're approving, we can add conditions to our approvals. So um, one suggestion that Mr. Buckland made is that we could um, revise our numbering process for our project numbers. Um, and because his office over, not oversees, but certainly support, supports, that's a better word, um, <clears throat> many of these boards and that Sonia um, uh, has a lot to do with uh, gathering the, the, the files and everything. We could, we could um, come up with a consistent numbering scheme uh, across boards so that we would then know or, or could more visually see when there are related applications going on um, across boards. So at least we're aware of them. And Mr. Buckland has made a suggestion um, for how we might do that. Uh, and one of the first changes is to preface the project number with the year. Instead of making the year the second, if we put the year in front, then it's easier to sort uh, by year. So I believe the first change is a four digit year, hyphen, uh, two digit sequence number, which Sonia would maintain uh, and assign and then a three-digit um, designator of plan type. Did I get that right, Kim? That's right, that's about right. So um, that each board would then be aware um, if there were other, other related plans, and at least but there would be a way. Just by looking at the, the, uh, the project number. Right, and then I, we didn't go so far as to talk about, uh, you know, cross-linking them on the website and other things like that. But at least with a numbering scheme, that's a first step towards making it more visible. That was the goal of the change. So I assume you and Sonia are actively thinking about how to implement something along those lines? Uh, one of the things, uh, I think that we have uh, the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals and um, uh, Conservation Commission on board. Uh, what we need to do is uh, get uh, some of the other uh, boards, particularly the Board of Health, and uh, see if they'll uh, be uh, willing to go along with a numbering sim similar numbering system as well. So we'll wait to hear back from you on that? Right. Okay. Thank you very much for entertaining this. I think it'll, it'll be a step forward. Sure, and it's a way to, to quickly re resolve the, where the permits have been issued on the projects as well. Okay. Um, Moving on, staff report. Uh, Mr. Riley, I'm going to include you in staff report. Do you have any comments or any information you'd like to share with us tonight? Yeah. Um, first of all, my apology for the board for you're not getting those plans for Bay Point. I specifically told them that I wanted two full sets of plans and small sets submitted so that you'd be able to see them tonight. And it's very unfortunate that they didn't have them. I don't know why they didn't. I think it's totally inappropriate to come before you without the documentation in hand that have been revised and to give it to you for your consideration. It's one thing for me to take a look at it, but you are the approving authority. I'm only trying to do work which helps you. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to tell any applicant, if you haven't provided us with the information, don't expect a decision until we see it. I don't think that's too much to ask. Uh, in my experience working with people and having made presentations many, many times myself, I didn't come to the board unprepared. And I don't see why, and I'm not criticizing you, I'm trying to support you and say, you have no reason to um, uh, give approval on anything if you haven't really seen the documentation. And I think it's very unfortunate. Um, one of the things going forward maybe would consider in terms of uh, detailed plans and so forth where you have multiple things to consider would be to, as you've suggested tonight, Mr. Chairman, you, you want to talk about the hydrogeology, you want to talk about the trees. Uh, there was one other issue, the soil perhaps. Um, in some cases, uh, when you've had complicated projects like this, you can determine ahead of time what particular topics on that proposal are going to be addressed for the night. And you, you stick to that topic for, for discussion until you get the information or, or you find out from the applicant, well, he's got to go back and do some more research. And he's not prepared to talk about that topic. Just say, okay, come back when you're ready. 
Uh, totally totally I, agree. I think you need to, I'm just suggesting that you take a little bit stronger role in dealing with the regulations and the word will get out there that you're not going to take any nonsense from now on. And I think it would be very helpful not only for you but for the public and also for the applicants who come before you to know what to expect. So I will help the way I can, um, but I don't want to usurp your authority as the planning board either. So I, I appreciate your comments, Charlie, and, I, and you know I take them to heart. Mr. Buckland, any comments tonight for staff report? No, I think I've commented enough tonight. <laughs> any new business? Correspondence. None. Next meeting is August 23rd, 6 p.m. at this place. Um, before we adjourn, um, Mr. Buckland, have you heard anything at all in the hallways here in Town Hall or the, or the mixed-use building about going back to 100% remote? Uh, no, I asked the question at a department head meeting uh, this morning and, uh, or this afternoon, and the answer was no, that we'd not be going back to completely remote meetings. Um, Unless there's some other CDC guidance hmm. that comes along and makes a recommendation of some change. I would ask each member of this board, are you comfortable um, meeting in this format going forward? I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I okay. Do. Uh, I do think we should give some thought to allowing participation of board members by Zoom if, for example, Mr. King says he has trouble getting here or if that, somebody is traveling. That is uh, allowed and by state law, even the chair can be remote. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I think to, to Kyle's point, the whole being in public for me, it does phase me in the least. Is what? Does not phase me personally in the least. But I think what we did see, as much as I hate not being around people, we saw a much bigger participation rate in the meetings when we were doing Zoom. I agree. So that might, until this next round of the Delta variant passes, it might be a better choice. Let's I like being around people, but yeah. I, you know, I can't Let's put my feelings first. talk about it next first. week based on what we know then. I mean, in two weeks. So I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 500. Next meeting, August 23rd, 6 p.m., same place. Thank you all very much.